and welcome to Fantasy View with me, Jason Hubbard. Here I review fantasy novels to let you know what to read if it catches your fancy, and I let you know about the books I wrote myself. Well, I couldn't help myself. I went ahead and read the other two installments of the Feyland Trilogy by Anthea Sharp, which might be a pen name. The story is about a video game, or to be exact, a VR simulation game, that's been specially programmed to allow players to enter the Fairy Realm which humans haven't gone into for hundreds of years. The story has a special appeal to gamers like me, and even if you just like young adult fantasy titles, the story will scratch that itch too. The story takes place in a fictional city called Crestview, which I neglected to mention in my last review. The city was unexceptional until a computer company called VirtuMax set up a headquarters there, along with huge dwellings complete with staff for each company boss. And this supposedly happens in the far future. So there are things like hovering grav cars and G-boards. They're the kind of things that Marty McFly had a geekasm over. The first Feyland book, The Dark Realm, dealt a little with classism, since a girl from a Virtue Max mansion named Jeanette, and a boy from the poor and dangerous streets named Tam, come together to give readers a warm, fuzzy feeling. In the second Feyland book, The Bright Court, Classism returns as the son of Virtue Max's CEO, Roy, arrives at the local school. He's all too happy to tell everyone how great he is, being the CEO's son and all, and he puts down Tam by calling him an Xy, since Tam comes from the part of town called the X. Not quite Trump rally material, but uh, close, I suppose. The strange thing about Roy is that the other students seem to fawn over him right away, when they're usually distrustful of rich kids. Rich kids are usually arrogant and like to take advantage of others, so they're usually the target of scorn, but Roy immediately proves to be an exception, since he gains a following and people are soon slipping on puddles of drool in the halls. Jeanette and Tam seem to be the only ones unaffected by this strange fixation, and since they're actually smart protagonists, imagine that, they have a hunch that Roy had been playing the game called Feyland himself, which is still on the alpha stage of development at Virtue Max. Thus, he's been going into the fairy realm, and he might have actually beaten the final boss and won himself a prize. A glamour that makes those around him fall for him harder than screaming girls at a Justin Bieber concert. Uh, you know, after he's done pissing in a janitor's bucket and calling it music history. Of course, Roy could be using his glamour to get undeserved attention simply out of vanity. But Jeanette and Tam see evidence that Roy is doing something on the side that's putting his followers in danger. And so Jeanette and Tam decided to venture into Feyland themselves to look for answers, even though they had brushed with death a few times there before. They had assumed that Roy had gotten his gift from the Dark Queen of the Unseelie Court, whom they already met. But Roy had actually met with the so-called Bright King of the Seelie Court. This king isn't as evil and nasty as the Queen, but that's like saying a boa constrictor is nicer than a cobra, just because it's not poisonous. That's enough about the plot, but I want to share a crazy coincidence with you. When Jeanette goes back into the game for the first time, she decides to choose a different avatar so that the fairies won't recognize her. She chooses a Kitsune, which is a half-human, half-fox figure. And in the video game that I had been playing, Fire Emblem Fates, I had just seen a bunch of Kitsunes myself, whose abilities match Jeanette's avatar in the book. I hadn't even heard of a Kitsune before this. And finally, in the third installment, The Twilight Kingdom, don't worry, there are no sparkly vampires here, the author proves once again how adept she is at taking an already bad situation and making it worse for her heroes. Virtue Max's full D VR system, along with this box in title, Feyland, is entering the beta stage and is soon to be released. Once it does, people all over will be able to enter the fairy realm, and then fairies will be able to drain their energy and use it to cross over into the mortal realm. This would be a bad thing because, well, have you ever had a significant other whom you swear was a succubus? Now imagine a significant other who really is a succubus. I'm sure the sex would be hot, but 
then they will tear your skin off and wear it like Lady Gaga's meat dress. That would be a problem, I'm sure. So it's up to Jeanette and Tam to do the only thing they can to prevent the game's release. Go to executive board meetings and show them pie charts. Yeah, you eat your pie. You eat it. Eat it! Well, okay, they don't do that, but they do what I guess is the next best thing. Break into Virtue Max headquarters, plant a bomb, and then detonate it from a safe distance. Actually, that really is a consideration that goes through Jeanette's mind at one point. I guess those fairies really are scary. Actually, our heroes enter the beta testing team, which is open to only a few select individuals since the company is extremely choosy and concerned about corporate sabotage. The entire team is made up of characters from the previous installments, except for two. Corrine, a Virtue Max employee who's there to keep an eye on things, and Spark, a gaming celebrity the likes of which isn't real in today's world, but if esports continue to get bigger, there might soon be such a celebrity. So our heroes within the beta team enter the latest version of Feyland, and they discover that the game doesn't affect their senses as the alpha version had. Their prototype full D systems had given them immersive experiences, making them feel as though they really were in another world. But the latest version simply makes them feel as though they're wearing helmets with built-in video screens. Which is exactly what they're doing. So it seems like Jeanette and Tam's worries over the game might be unwarranted, since Feyland doesn't seem to delve into the fairy realm anymore. But of course, something has to give, since the Dark Queen and Bright King have joined forces for the first time in eons to ensure that they'll create a portal to the mortal realm. So, what can I say? This series won't win the Hugo Award for excellent writing or anything, but I find it a guilty pleasure since it's about video games. And there are few stories that make video games seem dangerous or whatnot without making me roll my eyes. Outside of video games, it's about people dealing with insecurities, such as Tam thinking he's no good for Jeanette, since he and his family are poor, while she's decidedly not. There's also the conflict within Jeanette's dad, who knows the game is dangerous, but doesn't understand why. And even though he tried to have the game delayed indefinitely, not even he is convinced that the game isn't fit for release. A common real-life occurrence, although for different reasons. Overall, the story is simply a case of young people who bang their heads against a wall because they know an important secret. And this makes them special. And what young person doesn't want to feel special while risking their lives in a video game? Oh yeah, um, athletes, that's who. It turns out the author is quite the romantic, which I guess she ought to be since she also writes historical romances. Jeanette and Tam officially become a couple in the second installment, and it isn't long before they find any excuse to touch and kiss each other. This relationship seemed inevitable, but for a time I thought it would begin with them professing their love for each other while their lives were in imminent danger. Just like in this one Nintendo DS game I played. Fortunately, it isn't as sappy as all that. It's just a case of a girl who's interested in a guy because he saved her life a few times and he genuinely cares for his family despite his faults. Maybe I just shouldn't play sappy DS games anymore. I must admit, the romance in this series is a guilty pleasure. But I wish the characters had a little more chemistry between them. I mean, their love for video games and the time they share eating crappy school lunches could be enough for most people, but the author could have done more to make them seem truly right for each other. Speaking of negative criticisms, let's go into a few more. In my last review, I said that Tam's mother seems to be going through dementia, but actually it seems like she's going through depression. I think I had the wrong idea about her because she doesn't talk much, even in scenes where she's the focus such as this one time when her behavior seemed really odd because she stared at someone and didn't say anything. And about Roy's glamour, it seems to affect quite a number of people, but it doesn't affect Tam or Jeanette. You would think it would at least affect Jeanette, but it never does. It could be because Jeanette had already been in contact with fairy magic, or because she's in love with someone else. But the book doesn't offer any explanation. And there's a certain character who seems to be responsible for the whole bloody situation coming to pass. And yet, no one calls him out on it. Tam seems to inherently dislike the guy, so I thought he would surely say something, but he never does. Many of the action scenes throughout the series start out well enough, but they end rather weakly. 
At one point, Tam is in-game as his knight avatar, when he has to take on a raging bull. He manages to hang on to the bull's head, and is ready to deliver a killing stroke. But then a Feyland character who acts as a moderator, tells both Tam and the bull to stop. And so, they stop. Yeesh, not even a real video game would end like that. At least some of the action scenes in the third installment are quite brutal. The ending to that book is especially bloody. Seriously, it's as if the author rolled up her sleeves and said, Okay, time to go all Game of Thrones on this bitch. These negatives I've had aren't really much, so if the Feyland trilogy sounds good to you, go ahead and pick it up. And if you like the trilogy, there are even more Feyland titles involving some of the side characters. I'm Jason Hubbard. Thanks for listening to Fantasy View, and please, play some damn video games. And read. And do some reading in video games, as unpopular as that seems to be nowadays. <laughs>